Well, let's speak to someone who had the perfect view of one of Warren's most iconic moments. Uh, Graham Gooch was at the other end of the crease for the ball of the century that dismissed Mike Gatting. Uh, he's live with us now. Um, Graham, thank you for joining us this morning on what is a really sad, sad occasion, but we really appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. Um, how do you even begin to sum up the greatness of Shane Warren? I think we're all, you know, completely in shock um, the, the simple fact is that he is a guy that uh, not only performed well on the international stage, but he appealed to, you know, fans of all sports around the world with his character, the showman in him, the type of effervescent character he, you know, the way he played the game in a really positive manner. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think most cricket fans and most sports fans can really digest at the moment what has happened, 52 years of age, um, still giving his views on the game in many media outlets, including your own, um, very insightful. Uh, what I really liked about Shane when he played the game and, and since he's a very positive cricketer, always looking for ways to win matches, to entertain the public, you know, when he played and uh, was never negative at all. And would have, I think, made a great captain of Australia. It never came his way. I think he captained Australia in 11 one-day internationals. But um, that highest honour never came his way. But uh, what a cricketer. You know, um, I have fond memories of playing against him, not, not least from being at the other end to that first ball. It could have been me, I suppose, facing that first ball, whether I would have got a bat on it. Gat certainly didn't. But, um, you know, we didn't know much about him before he delivered that ball, but boy, for the next 15 years, we found everything about him. Well, that was going to be my question, actually, Graham. that obviously nowadays there's so much analysis in cricket that someone comes in and makes a, a first or second test appearance and you know plenty about their technique or whatever. As he was sort of standing at the top of his run with his earrings in and his bleach blonde hair, what were you thinking about this bloke before he bowled? <laughs> Well, you've got to remember back in uh, 93, uh, not like nowadays where, you know, the, uh, the games are analysed, all the players see footage of, of every part of the game. Now, all we had was a, a little bit of the VHS video footage of him bowling against India, where, to be fair, he, he didn't start his, his career that well. And I think they got after him a bit in that series. But, of course, he had a brilliant captain in Alan Border, And Alan Border believed in uh, Shane Warne. You know, he completely believed in him. And uh, that's important for a bowler that, that, that the bowler knows that, you know, that your skipper has faith in you. And um, so we, we didn't know much about him. We, we knew that he had talent, obviously. We didn't know that he had the control for a leg spinner that is unusual. Normally leg spinners bowl uh, wicket-taking balls. They're dynamic, they're difficult to read, they're difficult to handle, but they do sometimes give you some loose stuff. But not Shane Warne. That was not his uh, uh, trademark. He was very accurate, very mean, kept it tight. And then, of course, when the pitch deteriorated, possibly during the second innings of a match, he would come into his own and probably produce a win for Australia, like uh, he did when England uh, did very well in 2006-07 Ashes at Adelaide, but had their best game. He came round and turned the game round at the end, and, and they won that game from a, you know, a, a very difficult position. Come on then, let's get to it. I suspect it's a story you've told on the after-dinner circuit a couple of times over the years, but the ball itself, and were you able to offer anything to Mike Gatting as he trudged off afterwards? Well, I think um, I, I can't go to the after dinner stuff here on, on, on live telly, but um, let's say that that ball coming down, obviously Shane put a lot of revs on the ball, obviously a lot of spin. It, 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 it sort of drifted in and that normally happens when you put a lot of revs on the ball. And I think, I think the, the thing that always still makes me smile a, a, a little bit is that Gat's face there, that he couldn't believe what had happened. It was just like someone had stolen his lunch at lunchtime in the cricket, to be <laughs> honest. It was a, a magnificent ball. And, um, you know, uh, you could say it was a freak, but, you know, the guy went on to prove, you know, what a, what a great cricketer he was. He lit up the game and, um, you know, he, he, he dominated spin bowling. He, he, he brought spin bowling back to life in the 90s and the 2000s. And, you know, he's a great entertainer. And I think that's the 
the uh, thing I think most players, you know, when you talk to the public and they ask you about your career, you know, he would say that he entertained the public and if, if, and if they enjoyed watching him play, you know, that was good enough for him. And uh, I feel so sorry for his family, everyone who loved him, everyone in the game loved him for what he brought to it while he played, off the field as well. You know, he was a tough cricketer a tough competitor on the field, but off the field, you could speak to him about the game. He would give you his insights into the game. He would have a beer with you. He would socialise with you. He was a great guy. And you've touched on it there, the way that he transcended the sports of cricket. And I mean, that is not an easy thing to do, is it? No, not, not at all, because cricket, um, I wouldn't say it's a minority sport, but it's not played by every nation in the world. Um, and, uh, you know, not everyone sees it, but he was a larger than life character and um, he was a showman. He, as I said, he was an entertainer, you know, and I think there was two, the two parts to Shane Warne as a cricketer, if, if I can quickly say. There was the bowler, the leg spin bowler, and I said controlled the ball, bowled different types of leg spin, had good variation, had a good flipper, which was a very dangerous ball in the early days when he played, before he had his shoulder operation. Um, and that's all I used to say to myself is watch for the flipper, watch for the flipper when I faced him. And then you had the man. Now... In, in any sport, you've got to play the ball and not the man. And as his career went on, not just the man, the legend, you have to just play the ball. But he was very good at psyching batsmen out, not by directly sledging you, saying anything to you in particular. In fact, he used to call me Mr. Gooch, which I think was a bit of a, a Mickey tape, really, uh, when I was out of the wicket. But um, he... He would say something to Ian Healy, the wicketkeeper, or Adam Gilchrist or Steve Waugh, little comments that you could hear trying to just subtly undermine you. So he was a fantastic competitor as well as a brilliant technician. You talked there about uh, characters and showmen, and you would have played alongside another of the greats in Surrey and both of them. You also think about people like Viv Richards. Does it increase your own enjoyment of the game when you're on the field with these guys who, who have such a passion, they make it look so easy, and they're such great entertainers for everyone watching? Absolutely. Viv Richards, um, you know, uh, Ian Botham were, you know, big characters as well, and, and they liked the big stage, and they had ultimate self-belief. And that's what you need to be successful in sport. You go out there, you believe in what you're going to do, and, and you just go for it. And, th and they always made things happen. And, and that's the great thing about, about sport. And the, the better players, you know, believe in themselves and they, they believe they can change games. And, and they go out there and they project themselves. I think as a sportsman, you have to have a presence about you. And Shane Warne had a presence. He had an aura about him. So did Viv Richards. So did Ian Botham. You know, they would take the game by the scruff of the neck and, you know, change the game, make a difference. And that's what you want to do in sport. When you go out there as an individual, you want to make a difference. And as for playing with them and against them, you know, I think every sportsman should want to compete against the best. You want to put your skills up against the best to see how you get on and bring it on and find out, and find out who comes out on top. That is one of the things about playing professional sport. It's not about avoiding the best players. If Shane Wall don't play in a match, that's better for your team, obviously, because he's not playing. But I would say you want to take on the best you want because that makes you into a better player and that gives you a better attitude. And Graham, if it is possible to sum up, what do you think his lasting legacy will be? Well, his lasting le legacy will be he, he was one of the all-time greats, certainly one of the, you know, the all-time great player in the last couple of decades, you know, two or three decades. Um, he changed the game. He made it more entertaining for the cricket watching public and for the sports watching public. He was a great bloke. More importantly, being a great cricketer, he was a great person. And I think that's the ultimate accolade. And I enjoyed every minute of his company and the competitiveness of playing against him.